recently lagging countries referred to earlier by Jacob Pallas. These are 80 countries, um, including the 50 least developed countries and 30 other low-income countries, including big countries like Nigeria, Bangladesh, Indonesia, and Ethiopia. These countries uh, have been identified by TWAS as lagging behind other countries in the world in the area of research and development, especially research capacity. And as was mentioned earlier by Jacot, 25% of humanity live in these countries. So these countries, in addition to low capacity in science and technology, are also facing immense sustainability problems, such as food, health, energy, and water security. Uh, that was, uh, again, referred to by, uh, by Dr. Koma Ja. And in my view, their greatest challenge is how to build and sustain capacities in science, technology, and innovation to solve real-life problems facing their nations. So when it comes to education and training, in my view, the major problem facing these countries is that of quality and excellence, both in scientific research and education. For example, not a single university in the 80 countries I just mentioned is listed among the top 500 universities in the world, not a single one. In addition, the contribution of research papers published by all the 80 countries in international journals in the year 2007 is only 0.85% of the world total. This is actually equivalent to the contribution made by a small country, Israel. So you can see how weak these countries are, and that's why they have been carefully identified as countries that really need a lot of attention by all the organizations that really want to support science and technology in the developing world. So that should really be the primary focus. And promoting quality education and training in these countries, in my view, in the final analysis, is the responsibility of their governments. We can help from outside, but the major responsibility really lies in the governments themselves addressing this issue. But as I said, support from other countries, both in the north and in the south, will certainly go a long way in promoting excellence and relevance in education and research in the S&T lagging countries. So what I really plan to do is just to highlight three, just three concepts of action that I feel are essential to promote excellence in education and research in these S&T lagging countries. First, reforming and strengthening universities in general and scientific education and training programs in particular is critical in building research capacities in the 80 countries. Of equal, of equal importance, I feel it is important for each country to have a university that can be recognized internationally as a world-class university. That would mean they should strive to uplift at least one of their national universities, leading universities, to such international standard. Because such world-class universities is the only mechanism to attract and retain the best and brightest students in the country and offer them high quality education and training. It will also set standards for quality and excellence for other universities in the country to follow. So that was my, that's my first point. My second point is the complexity of sustainability problems, these problems I just mentioned, coupled with the advancing frontier of new fields in science, technology, and innovation, call for curricular reforms and new methods of education and training to produce what I call the 21st century generation of problem-solving scientists and engineers. Now, this is really something common for all countries in the world. Even advanced countries need to address this issue of curricular development and introducing new ways and new methods of, of teaching science. At the school levels, 